It's our one year no anniversary. And we have learned a lot over the past year and made a lot of mistakes. Have we ever. So we thought we would share all of that with you. This video is going to be a little bit longer than a lot of our regular videos. So I'm going to actually put timelines down in the description. So if there's something specific you're looking for, you can actually jump to that time. But if I were you, I would just watch the whole video because there's a lot of good stuff here. Yes, there's going to be great stuff. Yeah. And um, those of you looking for all the finances, the money spent, how many days we were wherever, that's going to be in our next video. We couldn't squeeze it all into one. It would just be too long. Yeah, and who likes to talk about money anyway? We know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and also you're going to see me looking at my phone a lot. I swear I'm not on Facebook, um, but these are my notes for this video. <laughs> to start off with, we're going to go straight into emotions. So our emotional journey over this first year. Yeah, it's ebbed and flowed, let me tell you. So to start off with, you were? I was apprehensive when we first started. Very uh, apprehensive. I was excited. Well, I was apprehensive in the fact that I had never driven something this big before. So that's where my, my angst was. It was mainly with that. Yeah. And for us, it took about three or four months of what we call vacation mode. Right. Where we were moving fast and furious for us, really, for this to become a normal way of life. Yeah, it was probably at, at that four-month mark when we stopped referring to Ruby as the RV and started calling her the house. The good part is we still get really excited when we leave one place and head to a new place. Yeah, the, the view outside the window is always changing and, and we just seem to trump ourselves with our views. Yeah, and it's been amazing. And not once, I don't know about you, but not once have I second guessed my decision to go full time. How about you? Oh no, I have not either. No, not one Not bit. even a chance. No. And as far as our most difficult adjustment, I think for me, it was just slowing down and realizing that we don't have to do everything right now, that if we miss something one place, we can come back or we can just um, decide to stay someplace longer if there's more we want to see. So yeah. slowing down was my biggest adjustment. Yeah, that's, a, that's the beauty of the lifestyle. Yeah, it totally is. All right, next is what do you miss most? So for me, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I lied. Maybe I miss a hot bath every now and then when it's super, super cold outside. But I can live without that. Yeah, I miss, and mainly Gizmo misses it, but uh, the backyard. Um, I really like just opening the door and letting him go out because he can go do his business and I can stay inside. <laughs> when it's raining, you got to take him out. Yeah. You can't hold it. Um, so me, it's more the yard. And the other one I think would be just the ability to go and when we're boondocking to turn something on and it worked like it's supposed to. And not have to think about it. And not have to think about it. So I know a lot of you guys are thinking, oh, you didn't mention friends and family and how much you miss them. Well, I got to tell you that missing friends and family for us is a way of life. So yeah. we've been in the mil military for years and years. So there's always someone that we've left behind and we're always missing somebody. Yeah. And, and we do miss all of our friends and family. Um, but the beauty of the lifestyle is we're actually seeing more family yeah. and, and yeah. friends on the road than we ever did in our sticks and bricks. Yeah. So the next topic is community. Let's talk community since we've been on the road. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I didn't know the community was as big as it is. And we, we seem to have made friends faster than in our sticks and bricks, and we've met so many like-minded people. We, we knew that RVing was a thing. We just didn't know that there were so many like-minded people out there doing it and all have the same passion to travel and seek that adventure that right. we were seeking. And the, these are people we never would have met on our day-to-day -day lives. And RVing has uh, allowed us to make these not just, you know, temporary friends, but lifelong friends that we'll always be connected with. Yeah, and the, the way that we've done it and as fast as we've done it has been phenomenal. And it's great because we're all in this together. All right, so the next topic is what you imagined as full-time living, what is actually the reality? Did it meet up? Yeah, campfires and s'mores every day. Is that what we're <laughs> supposed to be doing? That's what all the ads show. All right, so I have to say as far as driving in the RV, um, 
<laughs> it's twofold for me. One, me actually driving it is scares me to death, which I never thought it would be that scary. No. And two, when we first started out, sitting in the driver's seat actually scared me to death. I was actually <laughs> white knuckled probably for the first three months. Um, I'm better now, but I still have my moments. But what she doesn't know is it scares me to death too. <laughs> and I'm the driver. Yeah, so that's the reality really of the driving portion of RV. It still can be a bit unnerving. Yeah, it took it did take me a minute to you know figure out the rig how she handles um, using my cameras and, and whatnot but now I'm very comfortable driving her uh, I know what she's capable of doing and I, I wouldn't have it any other way all right let's move. well let me let me back that up I would have it to where she drove a little <laughs> bit because I sat in the, the passenger seat when she was doing her practice driving on base and I actually like the view from over there and I would love to kick back with my feet up going down the interstate, but I don't know when that'll happen. Yeah, I'll make a note of it. <laughs> it's coming Yeah. soon. Famous last words. See. All right, so next let's talk domicile. So our domicile is in Texas through escapees. And the one of the main reasons we chose that place is because we were already Texas state residents. So we didn't have to make any huge changes. It was really easy for us. Yeah, so like Stacy said, it was very easy to change our basically just change our address um, to Livingston yeah. Texas and yeah. we're good to go yeah so that is what's on our driver's license our our Livingston Texas uh, mail forwarding service address right. is on our driver's license that is considered a home of record and is a legal address for banking for insurance for all of that so if you're looking at a domicile that address is a legal address and it's also where we're registered to vote so we're full up round Livingston Texas residents and of course, Phil did get his first summons. Yeah, like a month after we, we completely moved over to Livingston, I got my summons for jury duty. Which, you know, obviously we couldn't do it. We were in Virginia at the time, so it totally didn't work out for us. It got me quick. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the ease of mail and the difficulties of getting our mail. Yeah, it's both. <laughs> it is both. It's, it's, really, it's really easy to get our mail. All of our mail that we, we still need to get, we send to Livingston, Texas. And when we're ready to receive it in a, in a place we're gonna be at for a while, we just either email them or go online to their website and tell them to, where to send it. It's that easy. But the difficulties arise when we're not in any place for any length of time or if we're in a place that won't receive our mail. So if we're only there for three to four days, that's not enough time for them to actually get it to us. We got a few bills in the mail that sat, sat and yeah. they were a little late because we, had, we weren't in a place to get them. Yeah, the one element that we haven't done is upgraded our uh, mailing service so they scan everything. That's still on the table. Our, our bills that we get through the mail are so infrequent. That's why I've debated the extra money if it's really worth it. So we're going to plug along and, and over the next maybe six months decide if that's an option for us. As far as ordering things in the mail, we pretty much order exclusively from Amazon. They're two-day shipping. We either send it to a Dropbox or we don't order it unless we know we can receive it at the campground or at. Right. And you got to watch out when you're ordering on Amazon because if you're <laughs> like me and you don't pay attention to the shipping address, uh, you'll send it to your domicile address. Because... And we had to pay extra to ship toilet paper back to us. So <laughs> don't make that mistake. Yeah. All right. So our next topic is what have we learned? So these are gonna be just some tidbits of info that um, are just kind of random we put into this pot that doesn't really fit anywhere else. Um, but we're thinking some of it is info you might wanna know. So let's talk about how to open and close our slides, which we found out about what? A nine year, months no, after a owning? Year. We owned Ruby for a year. <laughs> and uh, we, we always thought that we had to turn the engine on to open the slides. So we're at Tiffin in Red, at Red Bay, the home of Ruby. And we're in the service bay and the technician said, go ahead and pop the slides out. And I looked at him and I said, is it okay if she turns the engine on because we're inside the bay? He says, well, you don't need to do that. Just turn the key and hit the button. But a lot of our other RVing friends didn't know either. So we were able to impart some wisdom on them and make us look good. Yeah, so we weren't looking so lame. <laughs> All right, so next, boondocking is not hard. No, it's not. It, and we didn't think we'd ever be able to with 
lead lead acid batteries yes. no solar but you can do it and the point is don't be afraid once you do it a few times you're going to realize it's really not hard and we have several videos on boondocking um, if you go to the playlist i'm going to make a playlist of everything that talks about boondocking how to save water all kind of stuff that topics we've hit up on um, so that way if you're still nervous about boondocking you can check those out but we love 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 it and we're so glad that we finally tried it and stopped being big chickens and we figured it out and i tell you what it is freeing if you haven't done it play with your rig know your rig and do it all right next thing we've learned is just because you've been rving for a year doesn't mean you're not going to trip <laughs> your breakers this we true. just tripped our breakers the other day because we weren't paying attention we're on 30 amps they, it was dropping down to 45 overnight, and it was pretty cold during the day, so we had the electric heater on. Um, Phil had turned on the little uh, electric fireplace, which <laughs> I didn't know about, and then what did I do? I hit the microwave. So needless to say, we tripped the breaker, so you still have to pay attention, you know, even if you think you all have it down. When you live in an RV, you are in a constant state of purge. Well, Stacy is. I'm not quite there. Okay, I'm always purging. And we found that a lot of stuff that we brought into the RV thinking that we needed, we got to have it. We purged like four or five times, major purging since we moved into the RV. After the first time we purged, we were like, what are we doing with all this stuff? That's why we started this. Yeah, so don't be surprised if routinely you're purging stuff and getting rid of more stuff that you thought you needed, but you really never used. Yeah. This is probably more for me than for Phil, but the generator is our friend. When we first started RVing, I felt like if we had to turn on the generator, we were doing something wrong. And I think that's why boondocking was such a block for me because I wasn't thinking of the generator as a tool. I was thinking of it as, okay, what did we screw up? Now we have to turn on the generator. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, but I knew that the generator was there to save our tail. Um, and I knew that if we cranked it on, it's because of our lead acid batteries were too low. Um, and we probably weren't using the generator properly in the beginning to keep our batteries charged. Or enough. Yeah, yeah enough. Uh, you know, we thought, well, an hour should do it. No, yeah. it shouldn't. Yeah. Um, so again, those are some things that we learned. Another thing that we did not know about after having Ruby for a year was that our black and gray tank that comes into one, um, to where you attach your, your sewer hose to, actually swivels. We didn't know that either. So where, the, where does that come into play is when you're at a dump station and you don't want to have to, you know, open up the bottom of the bay and run it through there. You just pull the swivel out, hook it up and let it fly. We didn't know that. That was another aha moment that somebody <laughs> had to teach us. All right. Finally, the last point under this topic is don't be afraid of truck stops. You know, just get in and do your business and roll on. The truckers are not going to beat you up. They're not going to kick you out. That's right. They don't care that you're there. No, and most times I've had conversations with truckers who are more interested in the RV um, and maybe gizmo in the window <laughs> than anything else. Yeah. You kind of just look around and know where you can and can't go. Yeah. Um, and if, if ever in doubt, oh, hey, hey, Flo. Oops, if ever, sorry. sorry, community. Whenever in, in, in doubt, just ask. My recommendation or tip when you go into a truck stop gas station, have a good pair of gloves. Those oh, nozzles yeah. are pretty slimy. Mm. Just saying. The next topic is... What would we do different? Everybody asks this question. That's like the big question. Bum, bum, bum. The answer is? Nothing. I say nothing too. And the reason I say nothing is because you don't know until you know. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. So we our, didn't know. Right. And our biggest thing really we would be referring to is our dolly. Yeah. So we started off with the dolly to save money because both of our vehicles were paid for. We had two to choose from that we could pull on the dolly. It was less expensive, but we ended up hating it. And and some people love the dolly. And I'm going to reference a motorhome experiment because they use it. He has no problems with it. He's great at backing up with it. Um, but us, on the other hand, you know, we had issues with it. So we got rid of it and we started flat And we didn't we didn't give up on it right away. We the, Both cars that we had, we took trips with both cars and we tried to make it work. We yeah. thought we could make it work. That's the only thing that I would have changed. Yeah. But I didn't know. We thought we had the grand plan when we left. Right. And if you want an overall video about our dolly and flat towing and why we switched, I'll post a link to that video down below. I think the only other thing I would do different um, would be to buy an RV. 
years and years and years before we went full time so we could take our kids camping and we could uh, unplug for a while and you know there's so many benefits to our being and getting away from it all and i don't know i wish we had done that so our kids could have experienced it growing up that's yeah, the only thing that's a good point i yeah that would have been something that would have been phenomenal for the family yeah oh well they're lost <laughs> All right, our next topic is safety. Yeah, so one of the things we have on board um, are fire extinguishers. And I should say three of the things that we have. We have three fire extinguishers. We have the one that came with the rig up front by the passenger seat. We've recently purchased two other foam uh, point and shoot type uh, mm -hmm. fire extinguishers. One in the kitchen and one in the bedroom on my side of the bed so that we can access it. Um, if Ruby's closed up. So if you had to spray one, essentially you're not going to get a powder or something that, that um, jacks yeah. up your whole RV. All right, next let's talk about the gas stop. It's just an extra layer of safety when it comes to our propane. Um, and the biggest issue for us would be a tire blowout ripping out that line that's right there behind the uh, front passenger tire. Now there are other circumstances that would cause your line to break or rupture. Um, as described in the video, but for us, it was just another added layer yeah. of safety. It's peace of mind, basically, um, for us when we're driving down the road. We turn our propane off when we drive yes. anyway as and another we, safety layer. We recommend that. I don't want to debate it down below. I know everybody has a different opinion, and no, we do not have a propane fridge, so um, we have an electric fridge, but even that being said, even if we did have a propane fridge, I just would rather be cautious and turn it off. All right, next in line with safety has to be the big one for us, and that is during breakdown and setup. Almost all of our mistakes have occurred when someone has come over to talk to us during these two critical points, and we really wholeheartedly believe that should be off limits to everyone. And But if you are interrupted, then just start back at the beginning, go down your checklist, and make sure nothing's messed. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I mean, we're, we're friendly, we're outgoing, we love to chat with people, we love the like-minded folks in the park, but when we're breaking down and setting up, that is just the wrong time. Yeah. And we've had firsthand experience with screw ups. Major mistakes. Yeah. Major so, mistakes. Yeah. I may even have some t-shirts made. Let me know if you want a um, t-shirt that says something about um, do, not do not disturb, disturb. while breaking down or setting up camp. <laughs> um, all right. So, of course, this the next one goes back to their checklist. No matter how long you've been RVing, I recommend a checklist. Yep. Absolutely. And we, we use ours every time we, we get underway yeah. and every time we come in. Next is spotter safety. We we will not back Ruby up unless one of us is behind, well, I should say, I won't back <laughs> up unless she's behind me, uh, behind the RV. I back it up every now and then. Yeah. I pull it forward, I back it up. Eh, that's Bye my feet. driving. But when I'm backing into a spot, Stacy will be behind me with our either our cell phones or our um, two-way radios, guiding me in and letting me know where you know how I'm doing for clearance. And it's, it's more important to have somebody back there because you may, you know, look in your rearview mirror and see that you're going to miss the tree, the side of the tree. Yeah. But the spotter's back there looking above the rig and below the rig as you're pulling in. Most people in a car don't look up when they're backing into a spot. They look behind them. We've seen and heard of many RVers that have clipped tree branches on the top or ripped gashes in the top yeah. of their RV because nobody was looking up. And more importantly, just recently, um, it was because of Stacy spotting behind the RV that she noticed there was a curb stop in our back end sight. And as far as back as we went, had we dropped um, the air pressure out of it to level, we would have dropped the transmission right on top mm -hmm. of that curb stop. And that would have surely uh, done damage. It would have done some kind of damage. And our rule of thumb is if I can't see her in the mirror yes. anywhere while I'm moving, I just stop. And I wait for her to come into mirror view or camera view. Yeah, and um, that's really important. People have been injured, backed into, run over, squished between fifth wheel and truck. So it's really important if you're behind the wheel, you don't move unless you see your spotter. Yeah. Next is some equipment, more equipment that we purchased um, to keep us safe on the road. You want to start with the TPMS? Absolutely. So our easy EEZ TPMS and the 10 sensors that we have for it have paid dividends for us. Um, yeah, I, I check it before we leave, make sure that my, my tire pressures are good uh, and that it's reading all the tire pressures and temperatures um, because one of the things you don't want to have going down the interstate at 60, 65, 70, 70 miles an hour is a tire blowout. Yeah. And you set the parameters, your, your tire PSI, PSI and your temperature to go off before an event happens. So right. if you get an alarm 
on your tires, something is, is happening and you need to pay attention to. I highly encourage you to have it for your rig and or your toad. All right, so next would be uh, the Safety Plus. Yeah, Safety Plus has been huge for us. Um, not only in the way it, it tightens up your steering, um, it, it makes the rig a little easier to handle in high winds and when truckers are passing, but more importantly, we got it for the tire blowout. I wanted to be able to control the rig and get it as off. As much as possible. Yeah, and get yeah. it off to the side of the road after a tire blowout. And knock on wood, we haven't had one, nor I hope we ever have one. But the Safety Plus will help you um, control the steering tighter and it gets you back to center quicker when you're making turns. Mm -hmm. So in the actual test after it was installed, the technician had me go off the road an uneasy, an uneven road so I could feel that tire jerk and it was really smooth and there was no real jerk of the wheel. I mean, it was just smooth and Safety Plus lived up to what it's supposed to do. Yeah, and the bonus with this product is if you happen to be in Atlanta or driving through there, if you have it installed with the manufacturer, they don't charge you for labor. They just charge you for the Safety Plus, the bar itself. Yeah. So that's a good tidbit to know if you know you're gonna be in the area, I would definitely wait and have it installed there. Yeah, and it took us, I think we were in out in two hours. And the last one, of course, is our surge protector. Which can withstand being pulled out of the <laughs> pedestal while Once with the RV in motion. Only once, we're not testing that again. So our surge protector is a progressive um, EMS and it does a multitude of checks prior to even plugging in our rig. So I'll plug it into the pedestal, I'll, I'll trip the breaker, let it run through its checks um, and make sure I get no error codes. If I get an error code, it'll tell me what it is and then I can either go back to the office and ask to move sites and let them know there's a problem or they'll come out and address it right away. Yeah, and it's really also not only prevents you from plugging into bad pedestals, but if there's a surge, it prevents a surge from happening in our rig. And I would much rather, rather have to replace the surge protector than to completely redo all the electrical in the RV. It would be much cheaper just to do the surge protector. And if you're thinking this could never happen to me, um, I have a friend of mine that it happened to, um, Julie over in Chicory's Travels. Um, actually, it happened to her, while, of course, while her husband was gone and she had not driven the rig before. So she had to pack up her fifth wheel, drive it somewhere and have the electrical redone, which cost a pretty penny. Um, and then drive it back without him. So I'll see if I can find a link to either a video of hers talking about it or a video of ours, because I know she talked about it in one of our videos. Yeah, well, the, the um, surge protector and the TPMS were two of the products that I knew without a doubt we needed. In fact, I had them in my hot little hand before we owned Ruby. That is That's how important true. they were to me. Yeah, so next is a big topic that a lot of people ask us about. Food? No, that's what you asked oh, about. Okay. They ask us about medical. Oh yeah, the other important topic. Yep. We have TRICARE um, through the military and they of course are contracted with Walgreens. So we do all of our prescriptions through Walgreens. Um, we get make sure we have a 90 day script. Um, and as we're transferring from location to location, you can transfer all your prescriptions from one Walgreens to another. Now, that being said, if you have a narcotic or some kind of pain meds, there are specific rules on some of those medications, so you're going to have to check with those specifically um, when it comes to being transferred. But for the most part, it's worked great for us. All right, so next let's talk about how we deal with our appointments. For me, it's much easier because I really don't have any medical problems other, other than my thyroid, which is only an annual check. So I just go in for annual checkups, uh, mammograms, that kind of stuff. So going back to our what we call our home port, which is where all our docs are in San Antonio, for me, I could go back once a year. But for Phil, on the other hand... <laughs> I've got to go back at least twice a year to see my docs for my knee and my back. Yeah. Um, so that kind of... it. it poses a traveling and planning challenge. challenge. So depending on what your um, medical requirements are, it's gonna vary from person to person um, as what your needs are. Now, that being said, if you are military, there is another option for you. You can um, become a part of the VA system and, and do all your medical appointments um, through them and then that way you're locked into their system and you can go to any VA all over the US and they'll have your records there But initially you will need to transfer over to get all your medical stuff in their system right. And we this is our choice. We chose to stay TRICARE and stay out in town. Yeah um, We have a ton of friends that are in the VA system 
and absolutely have no issues. Luckily for us, Phil hasn't fallen off the roof or broke anything since we've been RVing, so we haven't had a need for any emergency treatment or urgent treatment. But if that were to be the case, all we would have to do is call TRICARE, let them know we're out of their region um, for approval, and see which ER or urgent care we would need to go to. So it's not a big deal. Keyword yet yet yeah well <laughs> knock on wood right so next question our topic is banking really our banking hasn't changed at all no so we're pretty much doing the same thing now that we did with our sticks and bricks um we still use navy federal we um well i should say the one change is we don't use our check card for everything anymore we do use our credit card and transfer money over i'm just more nervous about our card being stolen um, and it has been stolen and used, and Navy Federal caught it, likely before there were a lot of charges. So twice since twice. we got on the road. But that being said, it also was stolen several times right before we left our sticks and bricks. So there really hasn't been an increase in our card being stolen. Um, but I just like knowing the fact that if anybody charges, we get that money back, and they're not actually taking our cash, which is harder to get back. Right. So the next big topic is all about Ruby. Why did we choose Ruby and would we choose her all over again? We chose Ruby because of the floor plan and the diesel. Floor plan and the diesel. And the price. We had already chosen Tiffin as our manufacturer. We did a lot of research on manufacturing. We had some insights actually from a friend of ours and his dealings with um, them covering their warranty work and some things they did. So Tiffin was at the top of our list. Um, after that, we found two floor plans that we really loved. Right. Um, I, of course, was leaning toward gas because I wanted to go cheaper. Phil, on the other hand, wanted diesel. Because we were going full time, we were going to be in it and driving it a lot more. So he, of course, like all men, wanted more power. He <laughs> actually found Ruby and the price was fabulous and really that's, that's it. It was meant to be. I mean, the price fell right into our lap. We hadn't seen them. Uh, this model, this low of miles yeah. for that price gap group. Yeah. So I do not regret um, getting Ruby. We, I wanted something around 30 feet. Phil wanted something around 40 feet. So this was our compromise. So she's 35 feet. So that is perfect for us. Well, you've probably heard us talk about the lack of basement storage and the bathroom being a tad small, but it works for us. We knew going into it that those were two items that we were going to have to work around, yeah. and we have. We kind of started talking about the pros and cons with Ruby, the cons being the lack of basement storage and what was the other one? Oh, Small the bathroom. bathroom. For me, um, a negative is the amount of counter space. Once I have the stovetop open and I'm cooking, I hardly have any counter space at all to prep. So, And I'm used to prepping all over the kitchen and cooking multiple things at one. And don't even say it. <laughs> She's good at making a mess while she's prepping. That's what she needs. <laughs> but I don't have that. So I really did have to, had to rethink the way I prepped and cooked. So that is one downfall. All right, so let's talk pros of the rig. The biggest one for me is I feel like when I'm sitting in it, I feel like I'm in a living room. And we can pack some people in that living room when we want to hang out in there. Yeah, we've had 11 adults in there yeah. with ease. No problem. Yeah, and we were all comfortable. So that I love, love, love about our rig. Um, next, of course, is onboard generator, which we've discovered is my friend. Yeah, absolutely. And the next one would be our washer and dryer, which for me is definitely a pro. It um, is now. <laughs> yes. Initially, I hated our washer and dryer because when I pulled the clothes out of the washer, they were still so wet. It took two hours plus for them to dry. But we discovered a trick. Yeah, a, a quick trick. 16 minutes. Yes. So what I do is after it's finished washing, I turn it to an extra spin cycle, which bumps up the RPMs, pulls that water out, and it, now my dry time is normal dry time like I would have in my sticks and bricks. If I have full hookups, I am doing my laundry um, in the rig. And then I'll also prepare. Like if I know that we're going to go boondock or I'm not going to have um, sewer, I will make sure all my laundry is called up before we leave. Let's talk about privacy. Close the blinds. <laughs> Don't look at my rig. <laughs> Not that kind of oh. privacy. Oh, gotcha. My privacy when I want to get away from you. That doesn't happen. It's a thing. It's totally a thing. So basically there is no privacy. That's what he's trying to say. There is no getting away. When I need a break from Phil, because you know he never needs a break from me. Never. I'll send him outside and he watches TV outside by himself with one of those many TVs we have in the rig. Or he goes to the store, or I go for a walk, or you know, we just take a minute, go walk the dog, and that's really our time we get to ourselves. It's all the time we need. We got into this knowing we were gonna be <laughs> confined 
um, in a 35 foot house. So, I mean, you just make it work. Really, it's not bad, but you just remember, I hope you like the person you're living with. Um, love and like is not the same thing. You have to like hanging out with them and spending time with them because you're gonna do that a lot. Yeah, it's fun. What's the one thing we have on our list that we purchased that we probably wasted our money on? Extended warranty. Yes. Right, extended warranty. For sure. Why did we buy it? I don't know, we were dumb and scared. Have we used it? Nope. Are we ever gonna use it? Probably Hopefully not. not. So, I don't know, I, I, for us, I think it was a waste of money. Well, we say that now because we haven't used it, um, and nor do we want to use it or expect to use it. However, ask us after we have an issue where we need to use it. Uh, I don't know, but I, I it, just don't foresee that. Yeah, it may, it may just have been something where we got caught up in the hype and, and you know, didn't know, so yeah. we said, yes, let's get it. Yeah, I think most of them, especially if you read all the fine print, are a waste of money. I think it's more important to have an emergency fund and protect yourself with a full um, RV inspection. So then you know what you're getting into, and I think the fear of getting that RV warranty is not so great. We found our inspector through the National RV Inspectors Association, NERVIA, NRVIA, I think it is. NRVIA? NERVIA? Something like that. He did the inspection without me being there, so I, it wasn't like I was pointing things out or asking yeah. questions. And then he gave us a 20-page report uh, when he was finished. With and, pictures. With pictures. Yes. Um, and it was phenomenal. And it was the best peace of mind going forward with the purchase that we could have had. Um, so, and there was even two things got repaired because of his inspection that we never would have noticed and our dealer never would have noticed. So of course we recommend everyone have their RV inspected before they purchase it and that is new and used RVs because just like when you buy a house that you build, there are still punch items that may need to be corrected. Yeah, absolutely and the peace of mind that we got out of the inspection was, I mean it was phenomenal. Yeah, so if we had to do it all over again, I would say no to the warranty. Um, unless it was something that I had time to really go through and look at and make sure it was a good deal. Right, yeah, that's a good call. All right, next we're going to talk about roadside assistance. Everybody always asks us our opinion on roadside assistance, and I can tell you we don't have an opinion. No, we haven't had to use it. Thank knock goodness. On, knock on wood. <laughs> We can't tell you what we have. We did purchase through our insurance company, which is Progressive. Yep. Um, it wasn't very expensive to add it on there. And we also got a good SAM policy only because we were getting their credit card. No, we were getting the pilot um, rewards card. So we had yes. to be a member of Good Sam to get that. So we ended up doing the whole package at Good Sam. Luckily, like I said, we haven't needed either. Right. So the, the benefit of getting that is we have the pilot rewards card. So we can pay uh, for fuel at the pump instead of Stacy having to go in and walk across the trucker lanes and then come back. But so more importantly, we say probably eight to 12 cents a gallon, yeah, I think. Yeah, depending on which gas station we're at. So yeah. that that's the most important part. Yeah. So the next topic is our biggest mistake. And we kind of alluded to them earlier. So quickly, we will remind you how dumb we are. And we <laughs> we once pulled our cord out of the pedestal while driving. Well, no, we weren't actually driving. We moved the rig 10 feet okay, up. Okay, so that was driving it. Okay, you were at the wheel. <laughs> Might I add that? All right, we did that as well as forgot to put the pin in our dolly. So we literally drugged the ramps down the road a couple of miles before somebody flagged us down. Yeah, let's just say we were at Disney and it was not the happiest place on <laughs> earth that day. So have we done other mistakes? Sure, we've done a ton of mistakes. We make mistakes every day. Right. Um, but thankfully we've learned from them and haven't repeated any. Um, so hopefully it continues that way. Yeah. So next topic is gizmo, pets on the road. We say take them. Yeah, gizmo is the perfect RV road dog, if you will. Yeah, he he loves it. There was an adjustment period. It took a couple of months. Initially, he was pretty nervous driving down the road. Um, now he's very comfortable and he loves going on walks all different locations. The only negative is that we found um, is the fact that he is on leash a lot more than he used to be. Um, we did have him off leash at a harvest host a couple days ago and literally you could see the smile <laughs> on his face as he, he was, was running through the field. He was in heaven. Yeah, he definitely was smiling. And then some of the steps we've taken to make sure that he's comfortable when we're not in the rig um, is we have a Wi-Fi thermometer uh, yep. that we can monitor on our phone when we're away from the rig. And it just lets us know the temperature um, inside Ruby. And if I don't get a reading or an update, um, then I know there's a problem with the rig, yeah. power's out, AC went out, something. 
and we'll come back to the rig right. and we'll check on it. The thermometer we purchased has a great purchase. There's no monthly fee. We get emails telling us what the um, temp is, if there's an alert, and if not, Phil can just go into the app and check it. I can link that down below. It'll be in our Amazon store, if, yeah. um, and that's at the bottom in the description. Yeah, and it, it works well. So let's talk about the vets. We use PetSmart, um, the band fill that's in PetSmart for our right. vet. They have Gizmo's record. If we need anything, we can hit a PetSmart around the country, which we have done. And we also use our grooming services. Um, if you don't want to use um, a national company like PetSmart, you can go to different vets throughout the country. Just make sure you always have a full copy of your uh, pet's record. The benefit to having it at PetSmart is for grooming, it's got all of the sizes of blades and guards and how they're to cut him stays in the system. So when we take him to a new city and we get him cut, they just pull it up in the system. They verify it with us yeah. so we know it's the right one. And he comes out looking just like he has if he was back home. Yeah, and we've never had a problem with either um, the vet or the grooming. The only other thing to be aware of is even though restrictions require dogs to be on a leash, not all campers take heed of that rule. So just be aware that sometimes when you're walking your dog on a leash, other dogs can charge at them, which has happened to us. It's happened to um, friends of ours whose actual dog got attacked. So just be aware of that. Your dog might be the sweetest dog ever, but that dog coming at yours may not be. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's a, it can be a little scary yeah. to both you and your pet. All right, next subject is working on the road. So when we first went full-time, uh, Phil was in full work mode for his Navy contract, um, which we have a gap in. We've had a long gap. Being connected was key to working on the road, and we have a, a dedicated AT&T hotspot that we use. Um, we've had no issues with it um, whatsoever. Uh, but we do have a WeBoost cell booster in the event that we have a weak signal. Mm -hmm. We put that up on top of Ruby, reconnect, and boom, we're up and running. But again, we've not really had a problem other than just maybe slow or low um, coverage. So I haven't missed it. I didn't miss a beat when I was working. Right. We also have a very small printer. It's almost mm -hmm. a mini, mini printer. It's Bluetooth and it has a rechargeable battery so it can be cordless. So if it's perfectly in the rig, we can whip it out when we need to to print something and it stows very easily. Yeah. So that's also in our storefront if you need something like that. Yeah, it's been one of our better purchases and we don't, we don't have to print many things but it's good to have. Yeah. So it is possible if you want to work on the road, you totally can do it. All right, next topic is finding cab sites. So we <laughs> kind of went over this before in one of our interview series videos, which I will link below. But the main thing I use to find campgrounds is Allstays, Campendium. Um, I use um, the COE um, Recreation.gov. Recreation yeah, Recreation.gov. Of course, there's America. I think it's America.com. I pretty much go through everything and use it all as I'm looking. Um, the easiest way for me to initially find it is with the Allstates app. So I'll go in in the area I'm looking for, see what's available, and then kind of go from there. My last resort is always private campgrounds. I usually don't like to stay at private campgrounds. They cost more. You're closer together. But sometimes they are more convenient for specific locations. So just kind of keep that in mind. I also use RV Wizard to um, plan my routes. Is it RV um, Trip Wizard? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. It's RV Trip Wizard to plan my routes and have everything organized so we know what days we're going to be where um, so there's no confusion with pulling in at the wrong place on the wrong date. <laughs> True. <laughs> that would be awkward. And all I do is drive. So she tells me where to go, I get us there. She's right. been doing that for 30 plus years. Yeah, I'm very good at that. All right, next, let's talk about TV. Everybody's dying to know when you hit the road, can you watch TV? Absolutely you can. So we have the DISH uh, pay-as-you-go satellite uh, service and it's truly that. If you use it, you pay for it. If you don't want it, if you're done using it, say you put your rig up, you're, you're not going to travel for a couple months, don't pay for it. They cut it off. Yeah. When you're ready to travel and utilize the service, you pay them, you pay your bill, they turn it back on and you're good to go. Or um, if you're going to be at a campground for 30 days and they have um, cable and you don't need it, you can also turn it off for that. So yeah, just whenever you need to. The other way we watch TV is through our um, internet hotspot. So we stream Netflix, Amazon yeah. Prime. And that's uh, what we watch most of the yeah, time. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about cooking on the road. I love to eat. She likes to cook. Win-win. Okay. Yeah. So really cooking on the road for me did change, but just a little bit. So I really have to negotiate how I'm cooking because I have less countertop and I have less space on the stove. I really can't fit multiple pots on my stovetop. So I do a lot of one pot cooking, a lot of instant pot cooking. We also grill outside. 
Also, eating out is pretty much the same for us too. So everybody asked about that. I thought, well, once we get on the road, I'm, I'm not gonna eat out anymore. We're never gonna do that. But really we're just as busy as we were before, but in different ways. And our eating right. out is exactly the same. We haven't missed a beat on, on our favorite meals. Just, <laughs> oh no, we don't miss meals. Yeah, the Farley's well, yeah. do not miss meals. We don't, absolutely, <laughs> we don't miss meals. I, of course, my storage space in the kitchen is much less than it used to. So there's no more just going to the grocery store and buying a bunch of stuff. You have to have a plan. You have to have a menu because you need to use what you have before you start bringing more stuff in. Yeah. So really, that's the biggest thing. But for me, I've been making a menu for years now. So that's not really a big thing. I like to shop with the list and get what's on the list. All right, let's talk about the future of the Farleys on the road. What do you see for our future? Long term, we're going to stay on the road for a while. Yeah. yeah. Initially, we said one year, then we said five years, but really, we have no idea when this game is going to end. No. We are having a blast. Yeah, our timeline has been pushed to the right probably a lot. Um, we just, it, it was everything and then some after we after the first four months that we, yeah. we hit the road. All right, the only thing that might change is we're probably going to throw in some trips to Europe and do some Airbnbs and stay out there for maybe a month at a time. We're hoping our first time will be next year to stay a whole month, but you know, we, we're not sure when or how that's gonna happen. And then eventually we'll stay over there more and more. We will RV and leave the RV behind for a month and go to Europe and then come back and go back and forth. So that's probably in our future eventually, um, but who knows when. Yeah, we just love to travel. And you know, if we can find a sweet deal and go overseas, that's what we're going to do. And as far as our exit plan, we do have money from the sale of our house set aside to purchase another sticks and bricks whenever that day might come, but we have no idea when that's going to be. All right, these next few questions are we're going to do what's called a speed round. These are all questions from subscribers that have short answers, so we're going to ask each other the questions and hopefully one of those questions is yours or it's something you've been wondering about. How do you handle grease in the sink? That's easy. We don't put grease in our sink. If you pour grease down your sink, it's going to line it and coat it and eventually cause problems. So what I do is after I'm done cooking, I put it in another bowl to cool and then it ends up going in the trash can. What's the one thing that has surprised you the most? How fast we've adapted to the community, the RVing lifestyle. Oh, that's a good answer. Good yeah. answer. Oh, you're it's next. supposed to be speed. Sorry. Speed. Sorry. Oh. How do you manage the house trash or the garbage? The only time it's a concern is when you're boondocking on like BLM land. So when we were out in Arizona, we would hold our trash and there was actually dumpsters throughout the town that would allow you to throw trash in there. So it really wasn't a problem. Tell me about these colored rings. What's that all about? <laughs> our blue and pink rings. Uh, we got these because we didn't want to lose our, our bands, our real bands, uh, when we were out biking, kayaking, swimming, um, the occasional hitting the gym uh, <laughs> where they can pinch your finger and whatnot. But yeah. the main reason is we didn't want to lose them. So we figured these were just kind of cool and colorful. Yep. Why not? And they're silicone. You can get them online or you can also get this them at answer. some sports stores. We'll answer it completely. <laughs> or you can get them at sports stores. What was it like the year before you went full-time RVing? I was actually working still um, between anywhere from 40 to 70 hours a week. So I was pretty busy, but on top of that, we were purging, we were selling stuff, we were planning. Um, we purchased our RV the, in October, the year before we set out. So we were really busy. We were also trying to spend as much time with our friends as possible before we headed out. So the first year was pretty, or that last year was pretty crazy, but it was also super exciting. We were so psyched and all that work we had to do to get where we needed to be really wasn't a big deal because we were so excited about the process. All right, Phil, how do we handle bad weather situations? We monitor the weather channel, the weather station or the weather channel app. Um, it's on the TV 24 seven. And in most cases, I'll watch and see if there, if it's severe enough that we have to move. And if it is, where do we move to? So I'm constantly, you know, yeah. every minute I'm watching it. We've even turned on the dish satellite while going down the road so Stacy could watch the weather channel so we could see where the cell, the storm cell was just in case we needed to get off the road, find an underpass to park under something. But if they, we're in an area with severe weather, the app on the phone and the weather channel, we're all over it. How do you get your hair down on the road? 
All right, this is a true dilemma. It this is. is actually one of the things that does kind of make me crazy about being on the road. There's not very many things, but this is one. So I don't get my hair done on the road. Road is the short answer. <laughs> I wait till we go back to San Antonio. As you guys know, we are in San Antonio at least twice a year. So that's the only time I can hide my gray. So you guys will know when it's getting time for us to go back and hit that six month, six month mark when you start seeing the gray come out. It's also why I have a, just a plain, easy cut. It's not a style, it's just a, a straight cut because then I don't have to worry about getting it cut frequently. We are a group of five. There's five couples and we all hang out together. Four of these ladies all went to different places to have their hair done on the road. All four of them had their hair mussed up. They are all upset, disappointed. Two of them spent hours and hours at a beauty school and separate parts mm. of the country and still didn't get their hair finished. Even so worse. I would recommend if you need to get your hair done on the road, make sure you read lots of reviews or find somebody local who knows where to go or like me, wait till you get home. How do you split up chores? When it comes to chores, Stacy cooks most of the meals, like 99.9% .9 of the meals. And I'm I'll working do, on that though. And I'll do the cleanup. So I'll do the dishes, I'll put the stuff away. Cleaning the rig on the inside, we just jump in, we both do it. I may get the bathroom one time, she may get it another time. Yeah. You know, we both always work full time, so we've always equally contributed to the household. So you're gonna have to find what works for you as a couple. So everybody does things a little bit differently. This is just what works for us. What did you do with all your stuff? I ditched it. Well, most of it we ditched. We do have a small storage unit. It's a 10 by 10 with mementos, Phil's Navy stuff, some of the kids things, and a, a couple of furniture pieces that I've built. There are also a few things in there that we kept just in case that um, I decided I hated full-time RVing, um, but I've started selling that stuff off. That's so a good our, sign. Yeah, so our goal is to drop down to a five by 10 um, the next time we are there, if we have enough time. So that is our year in review. I hope it's helpful for you to see your future as full-time RVers and what it might be like for you. We have two more videos coming up for you as far as our year, year end, and that's gonna be our year annual maintenance for Ruby. Phil's gonna go through and show you his check for his annual uh, maintenance and then we're gonna do our all of our numbers so we're gonna have a video with all of our finances what we spent where we've been how many miles we drove all of that will also be in an upcoming video yeah so as you can tell this has been a whirlwind of a year again it has been everything that we thought it would be up and to this more point. Yeah. and more thank you so much for watching and hanging out with us over this past year the 15th was actually the anniversary of our very first video that went up on youtube so our channel is a year old and we've been on the road since the 13th so our gnome anniversary was on the 13th and it has been awesome so please make sure you hit that subscribe button come back and join us again we have a lot more planned for you this year as well yeah a lot of fun and exciting things ahead and we're excited about what's to come for the channel and just our our family in general yes so give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell and we really hope to see you on, on the, the road, road. Okay, looking at me <laughs> just do it what <laughs> you went so to start off with let's talking about the, the already yeah we're already talking so let's just keep moving <laughs> they fixed the two items that but Gizmo is benefiting from her lack of counter space because <laughs> she does knock a lot of food on the ground and Gizmo stands right by her feet looking. <laughs> now I feel this heat on me. <laughs> Good, because that bug was attacking yeah. the piss out of me. Or I should, uh, let me start that over. The stove. We have the, um... what do we have? You're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> What's well, true? All right, go. Now we got bugs right in front of us. That's okay. All right. Just bake it. Okay. It's our what? <laughs> Just fake it and you tell me it's okay. okay. Just fake it. 